Being the middle of three kids was never easy to begin with. I've always been the mediator between my two siblings, whom of which I've always managed to find a fight over the littlest things. The extreme bickering has been going on since the time that my brother got an idea of what it was like to argue with someone. Though harmless at the time, the same actions that were done by both about 10 years ago continue to happen again and again by my siblings. Now my brother and my sister, they don't hate each other, they just couldn't have more polar opposite personalities, which leaves me wandering in the middle. The baby boy of the family, Christopher, has always been, has always been able to find a way to instigate with anyone. Finding the easiest and quickest way to aggravate my sister is definitely a strength of his. Most of the time, placing himself in the same room as her and saying a couple of words was enough to set her off. He's recently gotten better at making quick remarks, usually to get someone to laugh, but nonetheless is very consistent with his behavior. The oldest of us three, Katina, is arguably the bossiest first child I know. Katina has found it easy to argue over the years that since she was the firstborn, she could tell her younger siblings similar demands to that, of a to that of a parent would, hoping it would have the same effect. She would never hesitate to try and help negotiate with my parents what the proper punishment would be for either my brother or me if one of us were to get in trouble. Thankfully, neither my mom or my dad would ever take it into full consideration. Not even a full month, my family had been in our new house in Middleton, the bickering of the Karis kids reached new heights. School was a good time for us three kids. My sister was in fifth grade, my brother was in kindergarten, and I was in third. All three of us in separate school buildings. You'd think being in different buildings and such would help with some of the bickering, but that, was o that only lasted the seven hours that school was in session. After school was where the problem started, making our house a war zone for my two siblings. I can remember the first time that they had a fight in our new house. Not even two days in, my brother was planted on the TV in the basement watching an episode of SpongeBob. Katina had decided that it was her turn to watch TV, coincidentally at the same time that my brother was set up. My sister, in her sassy and demanding tone, said to my brother, your time is up, you need to move, it's my turn. <laughs> Obviously, a pestering little brother found it amusing in any sense to go against anything she said. Um, no thanks, is all that was said before my sister took it upon herself to go over and take the TV remote. Christopher immediately latched onto her arm and got his hand on the lower half of the remote. The first of many brawls to happen in our new basement had just unraveled. Walking into the basement just in time, my mom found my sister lunging at my brother, trying to aggressively rip the remote from his skinny hands. Christopher, screeching in his high-pitched six-year-old voice, screamed, no, you can't have it. It's my turn, Gatina. <laughs> I, of course, <laughs> I, of course, needed to get involved at this point, quickly running over to separate them and got a hold of the TV remote myself while saying, stop fighting over the TV. <laughs> it was then decided by my mother that we either had to watch something that we all enjoyed together or no TV at all. These rules were difficult for them to follow, but nonetheless, they managed to adjust. As the years progressed, each one of us grew more and more comfortable into our respective personalities. Being only two and a half years apart, my sister and I were almost like twins when we were little girls. I would always be dressed in the same outfit as her, trying to mimic her every one and subtle moves. Yes, my mom did have something to do with the matching clothing, but I, was always <laughs> I always wanted to be like a Tina. A vague memory of her 10th birthday reminds me just how much I desired to mirror her. I remember coming to the table to have cake and sing happy birthday when I looked around and saw all of her older friends alongside her with party hats on. I tried not to draw attention to myself and just stood close to my dad's leg when a sweep of sadness struck my seven-year-old heart. She's growing up without me. <laughs> it devastated me not knowing how time and birthdays worked at the time and how I never got a chance to catch up to her age. As time went on, Katina and I grew more distant as we moved into our teenage years. When this dis distancing happened, it was not so much because of the bickering, like between her and my, s my brother, but was often a classic sister fight revolving around some article of clothing. We could never find a middle ground. I was always open to sharing my clothes and wouldn't mind if she went into my room to borrow something of mine 
But as soon as I did what she would do to me, World War III would break out. I learned quickly that if I was going to borrow something, I had to run it by her at least twice, so I knew she wouldn't go back on her word. Transitioning to my brother, I remember in my early years following my sister's footsteps, it wasn't uncommon for me to sometimes tag along in her harassment towards him. She'd always call me in for assistance to try and help pry something from his, his hand if he was being his pesty self and holding one of her belongings captive. It wasn't until he turned 10 that he would retaliate, giving us much more resistance than before. His and my relationship has only grown stronger as we've gotten older. His often giddy sense of humor will leave me and my mom sometimes laughing in tears at any hour of the day. He still has his times where he's being that annoying little brother, immature brother, but now does it more for the laughs. I sometimes try to figure out how both of my relationships with my siblings have flipped since we've gotten older and how their dynamic seems to have remained conflicted at this time. The recent separation of my parents has had a huge impact on us three and is something I 100% believe to be the true reason on why these relationships have changed so drastically for me. This break of our family has had us three kids scrambling in our thoughts. The day that my mom and dad brought us into the kitchen collectively on a warm September evening in 2015 was a night that none of us will ever forget. We knew something serious was up for discussion if a meeting like this was called. My sister, my brother, and I all sat on the stools that were in our center island in that order. My dad, bending over the table with his hands clasped on my left, was staring at us with a stone-cold stare. As my mother, standing across, directly across from us, swallowed the knot in her throat and said, guys, we have to tell you something very serious. There was a brief pausing as she saw my sister and my brother's face got confused, but mine remained the same straight and emotionless look. My dad took a breath and finally said the wor five words that no kids ever want to hear. We are getting divorced. The abruptness of the statement left the three of us looking at each other, internally our minds filled with pure terror and asking ourselves, is this a dream? Katina immediately denied it and started yelling with a whimper, no, this is not happening, while storming up to her bedroom. While Christopher, who didn't really understand fully what we were about to undergo, and the thought of not knowing what's next got him teary-eyed as he also gravitated towards his room. Still sitting in my chair, I hadn't moved or changed my facial expression. This was mostly because I felt in the back of my mind throughout my childhood that this one day was going to happen, and it just did. But it also was because I'm not great at displaying my sadness. It hit me like a bullet to the heart, probably the same way that it did for my siblings. The night was the first of many sleepless nights that I had ever experienced that wasn't due to sickness. Fast forwarding to the current day, things with my parents still hasn't come to an official legal end. This feeling of being in limbo for two years is not exactly fun, but we've managed to try to adjust. In the same sense, if you asked me when I was 10 what my family status would be when I was 18 years old, I would have never imagined it would turn out to be like this. Things are a lot different. My sister, now living with my dad, is not allowed around for the little things as often as we'd like. Christopher, my mom, and I are usually the only ones around the table for the almost weekly Sunday dinners. My brother and I will often go over to my father's for a weeknight dinner. It's so close to being back to normal, us five around a dinner table, but the absence of my mom always makes me uneasy. This feeling is the same at my mom's, that one la last puzzle piece missing. This absence is something I expect to feel for the remainder of my life. It will never be full unless some miracle would have happened and my parents got back together. Christopher will float in the middle, some, spending some, a couple nights at my dad's and a couple nights at my mom's. Then there's me. Still in the same house as before, I'm opposed to spending nights at my dad's. This isn't because I don't have a desire to be around him at all. I think, I think if I allowed myself to do it, I would be accepting this change, and I'm not quite sure I'm ready to do that. As I said before, I'm horrible at showing my emotions, and trust so to, goes hand in hand with that in my life. I've been known to keep my walls up, even when it's with someone who has known me my whole life, like my parents. I've heard it again and again by my mother, 
for years now. You can't keep it all bottled up, Mia. But the thing is, I don't. I'm just very selective with the people I let in and trust. It's taken a lot of time for me to realize that I'm not the only one that's experiencing a family split like this. It's actually more common than one would hope. I have a couple of people that I allow myself to open up to and to share what's going through my head at Brooks and outside of it. These people have all different experiences and family histories, which in turn offers me all the advice that anyone could ask for. These people have helped me in so many ways, but the thing is, they can only do so much. No one's situation is exactly the same, except for me, my brother, and my sister. The thing is, I don't have to explain anything about the current situation to them, because they're living it with me. That is honestly the true reason why I know that we will always have each other to lean on. Through this tough time, I have found the balance of relying on my siblings for their emotional strength as they have with me. We all have one strength the other one lacks. I know for a fact that regardless of the bickering and arguing, if one of us was in need of the other, we would be there day in and day out for each other, no questions asked, because we're the, b the bond that links our parents together. No, we still can't wrap, around our heads, can't wrap our heads around the fact that we will never be a unit of five again, a complete family. But nothing from this divorce is going to separate us as the three Karis kids. Katina's always going to be the firstborn, Christopher's always going to be that pesky little brother, and I'm always going to be stuck in the middle. I'm never going to be the type of person who is going to be an open book, and that's something I've accepted as a permanent part of my character. It takes me a while to really share my story with someone, but this speech has allowed me to do it in a comfortable way. This room being full of some of my closest friends, teachers, and family reminds me of all the people in the room that I still don't know. The opportunity to tell my, a little bit of my story in a formal setting to a group of people that I otherwise wouldn't be sharing to is definitely out of my comfort zone, but it's definitely a relief of weight from my shoulders. Thank you.